throughout the history of the Church of Jesus Christ, we are a people who run toward need, not away from it. Thank you. Have a blessed day. All right. Okay. Oh, can I pray for you all? All right, cool. Anything specific? So, Lord, I pray you will give her your peace and your joy today. Help her to have a very blessed week. We pray these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. As soon as this shut down and our city, our church began, and we began to realize the ramifications of this pandemic that was surrounding us in a way that was unprecedented in our lifetimes, we knew as a church like there are unique challenges we're about to face, but there are also unprecedented opportunities to share God's love in the middle of those challenges. We're doing uh, food distribution at Rockview Elementary School. We do we do 400 boxes of groceries, so, and so today we have two. One here at Rockview, one at Summit Hall, and there, Summit Hall is just as busy as us. Um, and then tomorrow we have Clapper Mill, Thursday, Bears Mill, Friday, Harmony Hills. And it's just, I mean, we get to serve the community, love on the people. Um, that's been a blessing during the pandemic, just to meet the people, pray for them, care for their needs. So that's what we're doing. And it has been nothing short of awesome to see God at work like no one else could take credit for what has happened to see an operation basically come to being almost overnight. Two and a half years ago um, we felt the Lord really calling us to expand um, on our food ministry options here at McLean Bible Church. So um, in an effort to reach people where they were we wanted to make them mobile so we set up markets and we would bring in fresh produce and other healthy food options, which we felt was really important. We were really, really grateful that the Lord laid that foundation for us. We were able very quickly to serve about 250 to 300 families a week, which is something that we've been doing for the last two and a half years. And then the pandemic hit and we uh, just exponentially grew uh, to try and meet the needs of the community. The first week, I believe we did about 800 families um, and the need continued to grow. So because of the Lord's provision um, and just His uh, sovereignty um, and laying that foundation a few years ago, uh, when the coronavirus hit, we were able to really quickly expand what we had uh, and now we're able to serve between nine and 10,000 families a week. So this is the uh, schedule uh, for the week, uh, the day of the week, uh, the different locations that we're going. Uh, how many boxes are going to each of the locations, uh, the truck that they're going on, our point of contact, um, what time uh, we need to be at the site, um, and who's driving. And it just gets uh, filled in as the week goes on, as we get volunteers to sign up, uh, as we get additional sites booked. We're here uh, six days a week, and we work. Um, we're open for close to 14 hours a day. So some of the biggest needs that we have right now are definitely uh, volunteers. This requires about 100 plus volunteers a day uh, here for packing shifts between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. We have a need for volunteers to go out to our sites and help distribute food. We have a need for evangelism team members who love sharing the gospel and love praying with people. We always need truck drivers and we also need people to give to the care fund. Thousands upon thousands of families being served through tens of thousands of boxes and millions of meals and millions of dollars, all in the name of Jesus, all with the gospel at the forefront. The people of God running toward needs in the city with the gospel. So this outreach is really more than just about feeding people. Um, we want to get the gospel out there, and that was the most important aspect of it for us. So of course, we want to give out the food boxes to the local communities, but we also are here to meet people's spiritual needs. That they will know that you died on the cross for their sins, so that you may have a relationship with them. 
grandfather and an abundant one. It's what sets us apart from any other food packing place that you might find here in the DC area is that we're sharing the gospel with them as well as um, nutritional nourishment that they're getting from what we're doing. And we make sure that as much as possible, every person who comes through any of our distribution sites hears the gospel, has a chance to ask for prayer, um, and we've seen God moving in amazing ways. There have been so many salvations and just incredible stories. There's one site in D.C. that uh, we started out with, I think there are maybe 20 people that came, um, and now yesterday we went and we gave 300 boxes within 30 minutes. Um, but that site, uh, the community has really come around it, and we have, I don't know, maybe like 25 volunteers from the community that come each time now to help, and they also uh, want to start a church in that community. Um, which is just incredible. So they, they see the deep need there, um, abuse and addictions and things, and they just want to come alongside that community and help it in any way they can. So um, they've already started meeting on Sundays to organize uh, that church there. And so that's just been amazing to see just that growth and just, we came there just giving boxes of food and sharing the gospel with them salvations that have come um, from that community is just amazing to see. I'm so thankful for God's grace in this church, the way the brothers and sisters who make up our church family have run, not away from need, but toward need in the middle of a pandemic, who have seen the challenges and said, we want to meet needs in the name of Jesus, in ways that people have come to know Christ. Churches are in the process of being started, and all of this while people's physical needs are being met in the middle of a pandemic. I, I pray that the fruit of all of this is Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, that people might see good deeds and give glory to our God in heaven.